There's new science coming at us left and right when it comes down to the brain, when it comes down to brain aging, okay? Now, when we look at the ketogenic diet, there's a lot of different compelling arguments that demonstrate that the ketogenic diet may be good for the brain. But I wanna to talk today about one really cool study that took a look at what is called network stability. Okay, now network stability within the brain means it's, it's the brain's ability to have the different regions communicate with each other. So one portion of the brain communicates with another portion, which communicates with another portion, creating a network. Network. If we have an unstable network, then obviously the brain isn't able to function at its best, okay? So we end up having overall better activity of the brain if we have a strong network stability. Now, what we've seen in other studies is that as we age, we tend to have a decline in network stability. So this one part of the study took a look at two large fMRI scans, aggregating a total of 928 participants. Okay, so what they did is they looked at these fMRI scores and they saw that there was a strong correlation between age and network stability. Okay, so they noticed that as network stability tended to go down or de degrade, it seemed to link up with age. So the older someone got, ultimately the worse the network stability was. They also determined that there was a strong correlation between network stability and cognitive scores. And what this means is that not only is network stability declining with age, but network stability is linked to the cognitive decline. So could this just be the overall reason that as we age, we tend to lose a little bit of cognitive function? So they've noticed that destabilization tends to start around the age of 47, but it reaches its max decline around the age of 60. What this tells us is that we start to have cognitive decline and network stability decline long before we ever notice symptoms, which implies that we could add a layer of protection earlier on in life to potentially prevent that network stability from breaking down in the first place. So this is where the study gets interesting and actually conducts two different experiments. The first experiment took a look at 12 participants, okay, and it had them do an overnight fast, and then it had them consume either a standard Western diet or a ketogenic diet. Okay, here's where it gets kind of interesting. Okay, the standard Western diet had a decent degree of network stability breakdown, right? It just wasn't as good. The ketogenic diet actually increased network stability. Now, I mean, we can't jump to conclusions and say that keto is gonna automatically do this. We also have to look at, well, is glucose just impairing it, yada, yada. But they also took it one step further and they took a look at cognitive performance. They found that as a general rule, the ketogenic diet led to a better cognitive performance as well. So again, it adds up, more network stability, more cognitive performance. Okay, so standard American diet, definitely not that good. But let's look a little bit deeper at glucose versus ketones as fuel in the second part of the experiment. They took a look at 30 participants in this case, and they gave participants either a glucose drink or an isocaloric ketone drink. And what I mean by that is, it was ketones, but it had the same amount of calories as the glucose drink. Well, guess what? Once again, the ketones ended up improving network stability. So this study demonstrates, or at least implies, that ketones have sort of a protective mechanism against the breakdown that we would get with age. So we start linking all these different correlations together, we have some pretty strong power. We also see a lot of different links with brain aging as regards to inflammation and everything like that. Now the trick is when you're doing any kind of ketogenic diet, trying to consume foods that are cleaner, trying to consume foods that are gonna have less of sort of that carbon footprint on your body. I will go ahead and say, if you wanna check out Sun Warrior down below, they have some pretty cool options in terms of like keto shakes and uh, keto meal replacements, stuff like that. They have one particular meal replacement that I'm a big fan of. It's called Lean Meal. So I highly recommend you check them out. They also supported this video and sponsor some of the content that I put out here. So big thank you to them. Best way that you can support this channel is by supporting them. So highly recommend you check them out, especially their Warrior Blend and that Lean Meal. You're not going to be disappointed with that, which kind of leads me to talk a little bit about uh, any kind of ways to increase ketone production in a natural way within your body. The reason this is a perfect tie-in is if we look at given proteins, we look at given plant-based proteins, and trust me, I'm not a plant-based guy, but I'm just talking about ways of getting different fuels in your body. When you look at the way that plants and fibers are broken down within the gut, they create something called butyrate. And butyrate, just like the name beta-hydroxybutyrate, is very, very molecularly similar to ketones. Okay, so ketones are beta-hydroxybutyrate. Okay, broken down plant fibers get broken down into butyrate. So beta-hydroxybutyrate, butyrate. See the similarity? All we have is a hydroxy group, okay? So when you consume veggies or when you consume fibers or when you consume chia and things like that, 
you're going to have a breakdown into butyrate, which has been demonstrated in some studies to actually turn into ketones. There was a 1962 paper that was technically was done on rats, but it's still interesting. They found that butyric acid or butyrate did get converted into ketones within the liver. So what I'm getting at is you don't have to just have fat to create ketones. You can potentially have some fiber and be able to create some ketones too, which means you could be doing it at a little bit of a lower caloric rate, but you could also be doing it with some digestive benefit too. So anyhow, it's just interesting. However, we can improve the level of ketones in our bodies without necessarily increasing calories. The reason that I say this is because caloric restriction in general has been demonstrated in multiple studies to be very powerful at enhancing brain function, enhancing brain performance, and even overall just healthy aging of the brain. So how do we do that on a ketogenic diet when most of the foods that we're consuming are calorically dense? There's ketone supplementation, which I'm not always the biggest fan of, but then there's also ways of getting your body to create more ketones in a cleaner way. MCTs, proper fibers, proper exercise, utilizing fasting. So any ways that you can create more ketones so you can get the actual healing effect of ketones without the extra calories is a win. Anyhow, I'm just here to relay the science. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.